good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have the brand new French Tier 6 aircraft carrier, the Birn Import, to review for you guys today. Now this review was made possible by the generous donations of the channel's patrons, thanks to these guys whose names should be popping up on screen right here in a moment. I am not in any way affiliated nor supported by Wargaming, so all reviews have to come from donations from Patreon or the ad revenue from the channel. So again, huge shout out to these guys, and if you want to support the channel, supporting us on Patreon is the best way to do it besides, of course, just watching the videos and streams. So the Beern, there was quite the hype for this ship. During testing, I've played against several of them during testing, even on stream, she seemed quite powerful quite brokenly powerful and she was nerfed as such and boy they really broke out the nerf bat on this one guys um this is not the ship that i played against in my uh mutsu and got absolutely sunned by this is kind of another graph zeppelin situation but they didn't do the whole pull the rug out from under your feet at the very last second like they did with the zeppelin and plus of course the whole changes to the program and such we you, did, you didn't really even get to see the Beern of old that was mighty and powerful. Funnily enough, it is actually historically accurate that the ship isn't that great, um, because the ship in real life, unfortunately, wasn't that fantastic either. Constantly had problems with her engines, and that's kind of reflected in-game with her top speed and such. But there are a couple cool things about this ship, and there are some very neat ideas that I do like, especially with uh, new CVs going forward, and that's what, what we're going to be talking about today. And full disclosure at the, at the start of the video, I'm a terrible CV player. So, yeah, if you're looking for a CV guide, this is not it. There are other content creators on YouTube and Twitch and such that are much better at CVs than I am. But I am going to be comparing the Beern against the other CVs that I've played. So, while I'm not the best CV player, you know, the, the, the comparison field is level. So, even by my standards, this ship is quite bad. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at her. So... I've been noticing this little doodat right here. This is an elevator. This is an animated. This is super cool. This will move up and down in port. I, I don't know why it doesn't work in game though. That would be so cool if while you're out and about with your fighters, as you're regenerating planes, they're coming up from the flight deck, being moved off of the elevator into onto the flight deck. But unfortunately, it only works in port. It'll go down here in a minute as we're looking at the ship, I do believe. But anyway, let's take a look at the beer. And I, I didn't bother to read my commander or my build from it because it doesn't make that much of a difference. I mean, well, it kind of does, but we'll talk about that in a second. It's not like a surface ship is what I'm trying to say. But for future reference, this is my build that I have on the ship at the moment. So with the modules, I went with Air Groups Mod 1. It increases the speed of the, of the planes returning. Air Engines Mod, mod 1 increase the boost time of the engine boost which is very much needed for these planes skip bombers mod one gives you a couple more seconds on the attacking time of the skip bombers and then bombers mod one i'm sorry bombers mod two which gives you more hp on the ap dive bombers and the reason i'm with skip bombers mod one because the only other choice is a secondary battery modification which unfortunately this ship didn't wind up being a little graph zeppelin like we thought about uh, like, like we thought it might in testing um and you could go Skip Bombers Mod 2 because the way the Skip Bombers work, you do spend a lot of time in the uh, surface ship's AA bubbles, but I'll talk more about, about that here in a minute. For right now, for my aircraft commander, I am using Air Supremacy, and then Improved Engines, then Aircraft Armor, Survivability Expert, Enhanced Aircraft Armor, and then Bomber Flight Control. Alright, so now let's look at the ship itself with those modules and skills taken into account. So, funnily enough, the armor on this ship is actually pretty good for a Tier 6 CV. That's because the Beern in-game and the real-life Beern was a converted Normandy-class battleship. So you got a nice thick armor belt of 83mm. You got a strip plating back here of 50mm, but everything else is 19mm of armor. The deck is 24 and then its citadel is right here, below the waterline. It is angled right here with some 60 millimeter, 60 millimeter strips, so that, that's pretty nice. Uh, but, you know, in reality, if your care is being shot at, it's uh, things aren't going too well, which you'll see here in a moment. 
Survivability, the ship has 44,700 hit points. It gets 19% torpedo damage reduction. Now, the planes is, of course, where CVs matter. Well, these are the few stats that really matter about this CV, because the, the boat itself is really just a floating um, airfield. So, in reality, you're not going to be shot at in your CV most of the time if things are going well. So, the planes. So, the bombers, with all the mods on and stuff, they have a hit pool of 1752 they have a cruising speed of 132 knots maximum speed of 170 knots with the engine boost 22 second boost time 40 second engine boost reload time you get two planes in an attacking flight all in all you get eight aircraft per squadron the ap bomb it drops is a 500 kilogram bomb you get two per payload and you have a maximum bomb damage of 3600 they're detectable from 10 kilometers away. 16 of these aircraft on the deck. They regen in 62 seconds. The skip bombers. Same thing for the top speed. 132 cruising speed. 170 knot top speed. 20 second boost time. 40 second reload time. The engine boost. 2 aircraft per attacking flight. 8 aircraft per squadron. Same 500 kilogram bomb except it's HE. You get 2 bombs per, per payload. And they do a maximum damage of 6,100, and they only pin 32 millimeters of armor. They have a 37% chance of causing a fire per bomb. That's actually pretty nice. And you get two bounces in the skip setup. Detected, they're, they're, detected, they're detected from 10 kilometers away, 16 aircraft on deck, and a 62-second aircraft preparation time. So, yeah, the planes are literally the same. Only difference is you got HE bombs instead of AP bombs. Artillery, and this is what some people were hoping for, that the ship might become a secondary ship. It's not. You do have eight single casemate 155mm guns. They have a, a maximum range with the current build of 5.6 kilometers. Reload time of 9 seconds. It, it really doesn't matter. You, you're not going to be using these. You might get a lucky shot with them once, you know, every now and then. But it's not worth building into. I know some, including myself, are hoping it might be a little tier 6 graspy with 155 millimeter secondary guns but it's not man my english sure ain't working tonight guys but if you are curious they do a maximum damage of 2200 you have a 12 percent chance of causing a fire on the target 26 millimeters of pin and 870 uh, meters a second velocity aa is actually not that great you get six of these 13.2 millimeter single mounted aa guns you get eight of these 37 millimeter aa guns and then you have another 675mm AA guns. And its AA range is 3 kilometers. And it's not that great. Maximum speed, 21.5 knots. Yeah, this thing's slow. Like, slow, slow, slow. Which is really funny because the Normandy in game is absolutely screaming at 31 knots. While the Beard is at 21 knots. I know it got converted to a carrier and such. So, you know, it's not the ideal load for the hull. But in real life, the engine systems of the Beard, I believe, gave the French absolute hell. So, it, it was slow. The engines didn't work half the time. So, yeah, that's reflected in game here at that load top. Yeah, hey, there goes the elevator. That is so neat. Alright, you got a turning circle race of seven, uh, 790 meters and a rush up time of 12.9 seconds. Concealment detection range by sea is 12.6 kilometers, and that is, well, there is no concealment module. That is, of course, without hit and miss. If you throw a hit and miss on there, you will get that down a little bit more. All right, so I'll show you my module and commander build. So, yeah, the Beern, I'm going to go to some footage, and we'll talk about the ship there, and the planes, of course. All right, guys, so the Beern. If you couldn't tell from the port section of this review, it's not a very good CV. Even by, again, someone who's terrible like me, it's just so bleh in most cases. But there are some interesting ideas and mechanics here that going forward can be improved upon. And in many ways, some of these mechanics are a welcome change to what we have in the game already. Alright, so let's start with its main gimmick, its patrol fighters. So, you may notice you get 8 charges of patrol fighters per squadron. Now, one big downside of this is that you only have 2 squadrons. You get skip bombers and AP bombers, no rocket planes, no torpedoes. So, that's it. So, you only have 2 squadrons of fighters. Now, these fighters are quite nutty in many a case. So, first off, you get 8 planes per fighter squadron, which is the biggest out of any of the... Uh, 
tier six CVs, so you will murder anything completely that gets in your fighter's attacking range. Now that will work in most cases against newer CV players, but it's a simple trick to just F out and then now since your fighters have already attacked, they're going to peace out. So there goes one set of fighters, but with eight charges per squadron, um, you got plenty of fighters to throw around. And you might be thinking, well, good God, with eight charges per squadron, the amount of spotting you can do with these planes must be crazy. Uh, no, it's... It's kind of good in some cases and kind of not good. Well, it's really not good in many cases. The fighters only have a vision range of two kilometers. It's not like other fighters which can spot for a lot more than that. So to spot in the beard, you really do have to drop the fighters right on top of the target, which can be done and can work because these fighters are actually pretty chunky in terms of their hit pool and plus there's eight planes per squadron so when you're at tier six you really can just drop it on top of a tier six dd a tier six cruise even most of the tier six battleships and they won't get shot down for quite some time you can spot for your team that way but you have to be mindful that they do have a very long run time it these fighters last for 100 seconds so when you drop them they're going to be there for almost two minutes. So, yeah. Now, if you're smart about where you drop them, absolutely, you can just shut down the enemy's CV just like that. Because, again, you got eight planes per squadron, and they have a very large patrol radius, three kilometers. And you'll see this toward the end of this replay that you're watching right now. Um, I think I'm with a Serov. You see the Serov's fighter uh, patrol radius. You can see the Bairn's fighter patrol radius. Like... These fighters can be very strong when used correctly, but as we've talked about, this double-edged sword with a long runtime, only two charges of a, I'm, I'm sorry, only two patrols at a time because of your two squadrons, and they don't really spot that well. Now, you can build into them definitely with the commander skills, which I didn't really do. I focused on more of keeping my planes alive because I'm not that great of a CV player, so that's what I did, but even without building into them, it's not odd that you get like 20, 25 planes shot down in a squadron in tier 6. I'm sorry, a, a 20, 25 planes shot, shot down in a max, in, in, in a match with a tier 6 ship, but it is tier 6, it's where a lot of newer players are, so when you get to tier 8 games, not so much, and then you know, you're fighting tier 8 ships, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the next set of planes that we're going to talk about, let's talk about the AP dive bombers. So, the AP dive bombers, these things are freaking weird. I don't know what they were going for here, but if you haven't seen or haven't noticed just yet, these planes drop four bombs per run, alright? There's this weird, I think it's like half second delay between the first bomb set being dropped and then the second bomb set being dropped. So, that's annoying, and you have to account for that when you're dropping these bombs. I, I don't know why they did that. It's weird. But with the AP bombers, these AP bombs have a pretty darn long fuse time or or pin threshold or something because you're only at tier 6. You're only pinning and citadeling battleships and like the heaviest of heavy cruisers like Graf Spee. Now, when you're fighting tier 8... Cruisers, that's a different story because the armor is thicker, but if it's not a battleship or something like Grashby, you are going to overpin it. There's no question about that. You might get lucky on some of the ships that have some weird geometry like the Japanese cruisers, but other than that, uh, yeah. And their dispersion isn't the great either. It isn't that great either. I believe they have the, the spread where half the bombs are going to go on the inner radius, half the bombs are going to go on the outer radius. So, yeah. But as you can see, the reticle does fit inside most Tier 6 battleships. And, of course, going up to Tier 8, you're going to fit well inside of those battleships too. So, hitting battleships and chunking them isn't the hardest thing ever. But, just like with all AP bombers, it's a bit of an RNG pool because your bombs could go right to where the Citadel is. They could go to the outside and bounce off of the, some, of the, some of the Citadel slopes, some of the uh, torpedo protections, some of the interior armor armor places so yeah it's not really good consistent damage unless you have players that sell in perfectly straight lines you get a perfect run up every single time which in a tier six game sure that could happen as you'll see in this replay again you get some a very good uh viewing what the beard's capable of in this replay 
So, yeah, they're great for fighting battleships and extremely heavily armored cruisers, but beyond that, forget about using them for light cruisers. Forget about using them on any Tier 7 or Tier 6 cruisers. You're better off using the other set of planes, which is, of course, the Skip Bombers. Now, the Skip Bombers, I didn't realize this because I've been playing a lot of Soviet CVs, but they do have one heck of a build-up time or preparation time for their run-ups. So you have to have a pretty long distance to run up on the enemy targets. Now, granted, if you're used to playing, like I just said, Soviet CVs, you're used to this. But, yeah, they have a five-second prep time base. So, yeah, that gives many a cruiser player that's paying attention plenty of time to dodge. But, again, at Tier 6, eh, newer players, you can get, get away with it here. And if you're used to skip bombers and you're used to predicting how ships turn in turn out if you can guess their maneuvering strategies you can easily hit them and the skip bombers are going to be the source of good consistent damage against cruisers and dds and if you're good enough to manage to get the skip bombers to hit the parts of the battleships that aren't 32 millimeters so the upper bell bow stern area of some battleships of course the superstructure um, of all the battleships down here if you can get them to land there you will get pin damage but other than other than that you hit the belt you hit the wear armored portions of the ships which keep in mind this is tier six so there's still a lot of dreadnought era designs here so you have a lot of thick armor here it's not like the soviet cvs where you can you know <laughs> play whack with their broadside and chunk 20k off of them now again against cruisers and destroyers they're quite good for that you can single line drop on DDs all day, every day, and you'll chunk them quite well. You see that in this replay too. This is a really good match that I had in the beer and one of my best for sure. And one of the ones that actually lasted long enough to do anything in. So they're good at what they do. There's not a lot of, you know, like with other CVs where you can, oh, there's a DD there, but I can, st I can still use my, like with the Soviet CVs. There's a DD there, but I got skip bombers on, so I could just drop on them when I was really going after the other cruise, uh, the the, uh, the cruiser, um, or like with the rocket planes on this. I guess the rocket planes would have been the better example to go with rather than the skip bombers, where like on the Soviet series, the rocket planes are just anti everything, or like with the uh, Hakuru, how you know you can if you need to, like if it's a do or die situation, you can drop your AP bombs on a a, cru a light cruiser. They're still probably Citadel them. Uh, it's not the case with the Baron. Everything is super specialized with the two squadrons to attack either cruiser. I'm sorry, attack either battleships or extremely well armored cruisers with the AP bombers, or go after cruisers or DDs with the skip bombers. Other than that, they're not great at doing anything else. So the planes themselves, the planes will be flying, like we mentioned in port, both the AP dive bomber and the skip bomber planes, they're the same. The planes feel very comfortable in the region time on the carrier is pretty good too. As you can see in this match, I, I don't really ever run out of planes, and this is with someone like me flying, that's not great at you know avoiding flak and minimizing the damage to the planes. And plus with the skip bombers with the prep time, you are going to be spending a lot of time in the A bubbles of certain ships and well well within the a bubbles of certain ships because the drop range i think is like 2.6 kilometers which even by tier 6 standards that's well within the a range of most ships that, you, that you're going to be running across so you do eat a lot of damage in these planes but the planes with the build that i have on them i never really got deplaned the only time i did get deplaned when playing the beer which i played quite a lot of beer for this video was when i was in tier 8 games um and even then, it wasn't till late in the match that I started to run out of planes. So it's comfortable there in those regards, and the fighters are the same too. There's a lot of hit, of, of a hit points on the fighters. That's why I say you can pretty pretty um, easily drop them right on top of ships that you want to spot, and they can spot them. But once they sell away, that is it for them. So overall, the Beern isn't a very good CV by any stretch of the imagination. Um, is it a bad CV? I'd say easily so. It's definitely one of the worst ones that I've played in the game. And this is saying a lot about a CV because CVs are some of the easiest ships to do pretty well in, in terms of damage. Now, the ship itself, it's cool. It's historical. I like the details they've added on it with the elevator that rises up and comes down. And I do like a lot of, the, a lot of these mechanics. Fighters that are good at being fighters but have a reduced viewing range, uh, Aircraft that are highly specialized to do one thing, like with the AP dive bombers going after battleships, that's 
cool because you don't have that situation where it's like, and we've all been there, where the CV's coming at you and it don't matter what type of armament he's got, you know he's about to just drop a buttload of hurt on you. I like that the, that the aircraft are specialized. It's just that at the end of the day, it's not together well with the Beern. Because the AP bombs drop so weird, the skip bombers only have a 32mm um, pin capacity on them to where it's just frustratingly aggravating to use in some cases. And the ship's incredibly slow too, so if you're in a bad situation, you're probably going to die because you cannot uh, you cannot run. You, you're only slightly, slightly faster than an American battleship with a speed flag on the beard. And I do mean like slightly faster. You're, I believe, half a knot faster than a New York or a Colorado that you will see, so you can't really outrun them at all. So, yeah, that's not that great either. All in all, I'd give this one a hard pass. I don't think they'll buff it at all. I mean, the ship was broken in testing, but if they do, even then I'd still pass on it for the other reasons that we've talked about. So, just give the ship a pass. It's not worth the money, even though it is only a what, $20 premium. It's unfortunate that a historical ship such as the Beern wound up like this in the game. Kind of funny that the Graph Zeppelin, that exact same thing happened to. Who knows? I'm sure we'll get a full tech line of French CVs in the future, be it a year or two years from now. But anyway, guys, let's start thinking about the Beer and the Tier 6 Premium French Aircraft Carrier. Let me know you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one.